G'day everyone and welcome back to the True Footy YouTube channel. As we approach the end of this video series that I'm doing, this is the second last team left on the list. Uh, and of course what I'm referring to is this video where I profile different AFL teams and I uh, go through uh, you know, how their season went, their best 22, their off season changes, uh, comments about their depth, and etc. And then projecting finally how 2024 might go. So I've done every club in the league uh, from a reverse alphabetical order, which means all the way from the Western Bulldogs to the Brisbane Lions now. And then I'm going to do Adelaide after this. I've profiled them all and uh, you can find them all on a playlist on this channel called Team Based Videos for 2024. As it happens, I'm currently also mulling over the next video series I'm going to do, which I might be looking at um, projecting teams three years from now. Uh, so let me know in the comments if you're going to find that potentially interesting. Uh, but today we are going to go through the current modern day Brisbane Lions. If you could do me a favor before I start the video, if you don't mind considering subscribing to the channel for AFL and cricket content. We are primarily an AFL content channel, but we will delve into cricket this summer as well as the offseason goes. But if you do me a favor and help me get to 25k by the end of the year, I would be immensely grateful. Now, let's start with the Brisbane Lions. Obviously, the, the tale of 2023 was one of heartbreak and one of progression. And uh, this was probably the best, you know, finished product version of Brisbane that we've seen so far. I mean, they're, they're a, a team that's been deep into finals previously. Uh, this was their first grand final with this particular group. And unfortunately for them, fell very, very narrowly short. Uh, but overall, you know, there was plenty of positives from the year. They were up there with the pies in terms of, you know, who was the best team this year. I think that's fair to say. I think you were splitting margins between those two sides and ultimately uh, it was just four points in the end that decided it. Um, they also had the introduction of some uh, some recruits. We saw Josh Dunkley slot into this side and it's not often that a high profile recruit comes into a side and immediately plays their role and makes them better, but Josh Dunkley is an example of that. Equally with Will Ashcroft as well, a number two draft pick from the previous year. Obviously a highly rated kid, but uh, the impact that he had in his first season was quite impressive. Once again, the Brisbane Lions proved to be very, very difficult to beat at the Gabba. In fact, uh, 13 home wins this year really uh, underpins that, doesn't it? And I think they were undefeated at home this year. Uh, and they, they had wins over Collingwood, Port Adelaide, and Melbourne at the Gabba. Uh, so obviously some big heavyweight battles there. And on top of that, the average winning margin at home this year was 34 points, which is uh, pretty convincing, you have to say. So what went wrong? Bobby Hill. Pretty much, Tim tearing uh, the lines apart, uh, particularly in the first half of that grand final, is pretty much the difference between them being premiers right now and then not being premiers. Um, in terms of their best performers this year, you know, Lockie Neal did win the Brownlow Medal, but there was also contributions, well, strong contributions from Harris Andrews and uh, Charlie Cameron also pulled out another elite small forward performance. So, so close yet so far for the Brisbane Lions. This is the best uh, evolution of this this current team that we've seen. And going forward, you'd have to say they're still going to be right in their premiership window. Now let's talk about their off season. So starting with the list changes by way of cuts, retirements, trades, whatever. Uh, we saw the retirements of Marcus Adams and Daniel Rich. Nikai Cockatoo also retired. Jack Gunston made his way to the Hawthorne Football Club uh, after just one year, wasn't it? Uh, Reese Matheson was delisted. Tom Fullerton got traded to the Melbourne Football club and Blake Coleman was delisted as was uh, father son Daryl McDowell White Jr. who I did not even know was on their list. Uh, I remember Daryl White. I'm really old. So let's talk about the guys they got onto their list. So they uh, had a pretty good free agency move getting Tom Doday bearing in mind uh, he's recovering from an ACL so will probably be available in the back half of the year they currently project. Uh, then they got Brandon Ryan as part of that trade with the Hawthorne uh, Football Club for uh, Jack Gunston swapping. So they, they targeted Brandon Ryan as a developing key forward on their list they would like to add to their own. Logan Morris and Luke Lloyd were also drafted uh, this year by the Lions. Uh, both of them slightly undersized key forwards. Logan Morris, uh, 191 centimeters, probably is more of a uh, medium forward at the next level. Then they drafted Zach Ostelski and Reese Torrent out of WA before signing Bruce Revel as a Cat B rookie after a pretty good year in the VFL. And he's part of the Lions Academy despite being 22 years of age. So, the next part of the video is my attempt at your club's uh, best 23. Um, I say 22, but it's actually 23, isn't it, now with a sub. And uh, there is a little bit of movement. Uh, normally, I put the players in the list, but I didn't have any of Brisbane's acquisitions uh, make this 22 on the proviso that uh, naturally 
uh, Tom Dode will not be available for round one because of his ACL injury. So he would slot into this team. Uh, but I have gone with Darcy Gardner as the third tall defender in his absence. I thought not including Gardner there on the bench would probably make this team a little bit too short. But the, uh, the medium types all kind of pick themselves. Stasevic is a gun. Coleman obviously had an amazing grand final. He's a good player. Darcy Wilmot also had a good year. Uh, and Connor McKenna makes that team as well with Gardner on the bench. Whether he starts on the field, it, it's kind of irrelevant at this stage. Now, we know the Brisbane Lions have a, a really strong midfield, particularly in the clearance stakes. Lockie Neal, uh, one of the best clearance mids going. Um, I've got Barry and Zorko on the wings and Dunkley and McCluggage on ball there. So if there's only one comment about that midfield, I mean, it's hard to argue with a uh, midfield that performed well this year, but um, it's not the quickest center line. That being said, it gets results and uh, they do have some uh, medium forward types as well that can rotate through there for a little bit of uh, freshness. And they're also in the position of being backfilled by some really quality young talent. And speaking of Will Ashcroft, it's also not included in this because of that ACL as well. And it remains to be seen how long he's out for, I'm not too sure. Uh, but I think he played 15 games last year, which means yeah, probably back end of the season, maybe midway through the season. I did read that he's uh, ahead of schedule, which is nice, but we'll keep him out of the team for the purposes of this. The forward line is super dangerous. Um, if not, uh, maybe a little bit short. So I've only gone with Danaher and Hipwood here. Naturally, Gunston was part of their best 22, presumably last year. Now I could slot in another third tall forward, but I didn't find a really obvious solution. The Brandon Ryan there is pretty mature, um, but I was pa in passing, I sort of read this quote by Someone called Ambrosio. Um, I don't know who that is. Forgive me. Uh, I'm an Eagles fan. So I, I presume it's somebody involved with list management or recruiting at the Brisbane Lions there. But uh, he suggested that the specific wording of him describing Brandon Ryan was saying that he was saw him as someone who could develop into a tall forward in there. Um, program, which kind of strongly implied to me that this is not a best 22 round one uh, acquisition in Brandon Ryan. So I've decided to go with a smaller forward line there. Uh, Zach Bailey, uh, Charlie Cameron, absolute stars. Lincoln McCarthy, I think is he's obviously been a small forward mainstay there for a while. Decent. Rain has also flirted with being a dominant half forward at times and, and not as consistent, but certainly good enough to make this team. And the bench there, like I said, I've got Gardner. I have Calamarchi making the team. Jasper Fletcher certainly makes this team, as does Devin Robertson just. I mean, Devin Robertson is probably borderline fringe, um, but obviously with Will Ashcroft out, he's got an opportunity there round one next year. And obviously he played in the grand final uh, as well. Kyle Oman, I went with the sub. Is that positionally the best sub to select? I'm not too sure, but he's probably the next player in, uh, at least from an outsider looking in. And uh, I think he showed some good form this year when he when he actually played a full game because he's, I think he's been a sub a few times as well. So looking at the players in terms of a depth point of view, um, obviously with Dode and Ashcroft not available, some of the depth is in the team. From, from a defensive point of view, I think it's pretty sound, pretty sweet. Even with Adams and Rich leaving, you know, Ryan Lester didn't get selected. Noah Answorth is probably also in contention there. Uh, Dara Joyce and James Madden, a couple of Irish boys that have had a bit of a taste at the highest level and are there. So there's at least some existing depth there. And that's when you consider Tom Dode is injured. Uh, the midfield depth is... Interesting, it's kind of extensive, but still relatively unproven, as you'd expect from a team that's in contention. How many of those guys have proven guns outside their 22? But, um, you know, obviously Ashcroft is there. Jared Lyons is a mature option for them. Uh, and Darcy Ford is a mature ruck backup for McInerney. And then you've got a, a, you know, a, a, a gaggle, a gaggle of sort of unproven mids um, that they could lean on going forward um, increasingly over time. Jackson Pryor, James Tunstall, Harry Sharp. We've seen flashes of these guys. I don't really know what to make of them too yet, but they remain speculative at this point. And then they've just added uh, Reese Torrent as well. But what I will say is, though, even though that those guys are, are still obviously largely unproven, at least a lot of them have had a taste of AFL and individually can probably fit into this line side and contribute uh, should they be called upon in 24, which you would expect they would be. Uh, picking the forward line depth, uh, this seems a little bit lacking to me. Um, obviously, they just drafted a couple of forwards and traded in Brandon Ryan. So Brandon Ryan probably does become realistic depth for them. Logan Morris, uh, pretty physically ready-made. So I, I don't know to what extent he is likely to play next year. Uh, should they go with a three-tall forward line, they don't actually have too many clear options in my opinion, um, which means that Brandon Ryan and Logan Morris could find their way into some football next year. Again, I'm a little bit ignorant to, to how realistic that is, but that's the way it looks from an outsider looking in. There's Bruce Ravel as well. He is relatively ready-made because he's a 22-year-old who just had a good year in the waffle. Sorry, the VFL. God. 
Silly West Australians. Uh, yeah, so the thing with Revel is he, he's kind of a utility. He has played half forward. He has played wing, has played half back. And it remains to be seen, is he a genuine forward depth option? Because uh, I pick Loman as the sub there, but past that, small to medium types, um, it's a little bit harder to work out who comes into this side and plays forward. So before I talk about the, the prospect of how 2024 is going to go, I'll, I'll, I usually have a little segment called ongoing needs. So what do the Brisbane Lions need from a list point of view? Uh, it's a very strong best 22. Uh, there's not too much reinforcing they need to do. Uh, in terms of you know acquiring new players, and they've got a few aging veterans, but nothing too dramatic. Um, obviously, as well, they have a, a father son again this year in Levi Ashcroft, uh, and that that adds to Will Ashcroft and Jasper Fletcher. So when you consider how many top end talents they could have potentially added from a midfield point of view, the transition of their some of their aging midfielders, Zorko and Neil, come to mind straight off the bat. Uh, that looks like it's going to be pretty smooth. And there's also Sam Marshall this year, part of their Lions Academy, who I think is considered sort of a late first rounder at this point, which doesn't mean much at this point. But um, in other words. The having one eye on their midfield transition, it's uh, it's kind of fell into their lap, and I'm not saying that uh, you know begrudgingly. I'm just being honest. It's uh, they don't really have to worry about that. Hence why I think this off season we saw them really invest in talls. Zach Ostelski, Logan Morris, Luke Lloyd, Brandon Ryan, uh, forward and back balance between those two. They've sort of reinforced that with the knowledge that their midfield is kind of looked after to some extent. From a ruck point of view, they're also I think they've got four on the list. So they have McInerney in the ruck. Uh, they have Darcy Fort probably as next in. And then uh, they've got a couple of developing ones in Kalen Lane and Smith. And I've heard good things about Kalen Lane. I don't know anything about Smith other than he's about 206 or centimeters. Maybe maybe he's bigger than that. I'm not sure. Uh, but either way, like there's no obvious positional list gaps here other than probably medium to small forward types. I think that's something that they could look to add uh, going forward. But, you know, as much as we can talk about, you know, Brisbane's list management needs going forward, at the end of the day, their focus is short term. They they are a legitimate premiership contender. And that's the way I see 2024 going again for them. They're so consistent at home. They've been a consistent home and away side for years now. And the one year that they weren't a consistent home and away side was the year they made a prelim by winning a final at the MCG. So, that's another thing as well. Their MCG form um, has improved. It has to be said. 2023, with the exception of a loss to Hawthorne, um, you know they they should have beaten the D's there, uh, and they very nearly beat Collingwood there. So that doesn't seem to be the concern for them as it once was. And Hawthorne do have this habit of butchering away teams at the MCG. You know, regardless of any era, that seems to be a thing that they just do. Um, look, I, I think a loss of depth. Uh, to some extent, there's, there's a bit of an experience, a bit of a clean out this year. You know, uh, I say clean out respectfully. Marcus Adams retired due to injury. Daniel Rich was probably just not quite in the frame. Um, so there has been a little bit of a uh, reduction in, in established depth. But looking through that, other than, you know, small to medium forward types, I think the depth across the board is pretty sound. Um, but I think you can be rest assured that the Brisbane Lions are poised to go around again. There's no clear vulnerabilities with aging veterans or something like that. There's there's plays in their prime. You know, you got guys like McCluggage and Berry, and to some extent Rayner as well, probably still approaching their prime or about to hit their prime. It's probably the start of their prime. Zach Bailey is another example of that. Um, and some of their best players aren't really that close to retiring, like Harris Andrews and Lockie Neal. You get the sense that they've got plenty left. I mean, Andrews must be about 28 now, but Lockie Neal's 30. You feel like they're in safe hands for a little while then. So things are looking pretty rosy at the Lions, generally speaking. The 22 is strong. The depth is good from a point of view of a team trying to contend next year. Then transition, you know, going past this is going to look pretty sweet as well with the Ashcroft brothers, Jasper Fletcher, um, and another potential first round pick in Sam Marshall. So overall, I think it's a it's a good time to be a Lions fan. And, you know, they, they went through that dark period, um, you know, around that Voss era. And now they have sort of built to this perennial contender status at the moment. Uh, but whether or not they take the next step, uh, you know, some of that's down to luck. You know, a bit of luck in this grand final, or more luck rather, uh, they would be the, the premiers. So uh, anyway, guys, that's just my take on the Brisbane Lions. I don't know how much of this was really groundbreaking because uh, we know how good the Brisbane Lions are. But, uh, you know, I'm going to do the video anyway. So let me know what I got right or got wrong. Um, Brisbane fans, let me know if, if there's some small to medium forward types on your list that I just don't know about. Um, help me cure that ignorance but that, that was just the way I saw the list breakdown there I think it was a little bit harder to find out what alternatives for you know injuries in the forward half would come in other than you know tall to medium types so anyway uh, that is all I got for you guys I hope you enjoyed the video let me know what you think in the comments and I'll see you in the next video cheers